Last night, the Carolina Hurricanes were able to get a much-needed win against the Chicago Blackhawks, and this game also saw Pyotr Kochekov net his first NHL shutout. Find out all about last night's game in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Hurricanes your first listen of this Tuesday afternoon. I forgot what day it was there for a second, folks. But in this game, in this episode, we will be talking about last night's game against the Chicago Blackhawks, where the Hurricanes were able to get a much needed win after a pretty disappointing loss out in Colorado. We'll hear from Jordan Stahl, Andre Svechkov, and Rod Brendamore in this episode as well after the game. And getting into this game, uh, like I said, they they needed this win big time. And heading into this game, uh, Max Lejoie was recalled from the Chicago Wolves, kind of uh, speculating on why. Um, and yeah, I've kind of figured it's likely Calvin DeHaan was still wasn't 100%. I don't think we have anything else to worry about because this morning Lejoie was reassigned to the Wolves again. So I think, you know, heading into tomorrow or not tomorrow, Thursday's game against the Avs again, uh, I think that Dahan or Coglin depends on how things go. Those guys will be ready to go. I'm not really surprised uh, that Lejoie was recalled for this game because, again, Dahan probably wasn't 100 percent and Coglin hasn't looked great. So I, I'm not saying, you know, they're giving up on Dylan Coglin or anything like that. Uh, definitely not the case. It's still very, very early in the season. Ethan Bear, you know, he just wasn't going to fit into the uh, into the system. So, you know, they moved him off. And, you know, I think that, you know, this was a very, you know, I keep saying it was a much needed win uh, after bouncing back, you know, from the Colorado loss. But I think that this was something important for Pyotr Kochekov and you know because I've talked about it at length in the past of ever since Cam Ward's prime ended that the Hurricanes haven't really had a long-term solution we thought it was going to be Ned but not the case and you know following last night's win Pyotr is 5-0 and in the NHL's first uh, shutout like I said yeah, and it just continues to dazzle uh, with his saves. You know, definitely still gets a little worrisome of how aggressive he can play. And but I think it's something that you know, I think the Hurricanes finally have a long term answer because again, Freddie and Auntie, both of those guys uh, are unrestricted free agents after the end of this season. So we'll see how things go, you know, come off season time of who comes back and you know how things go there. But you know, Piotr, young guy, and he's playing great. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do this season. Again, Freddie is on IR right now. So Piotr is taking advantage of the opportunities that's being put in front of him. I don't necessarily think it will be a situation like we saw a couple years ago when uh peter mrazic came back from injury and ned was on his calder uh finalist run that season i don't think we're going roll with like three goalies or anything like that and frankly you know now that things have gotten back to normal i don't even know if we could do that so it i'm really looking forward to seeing what Piotr can do i i think it's gonna be it's going to be fun to watch. I think, you know, coming, I mean, he definitely you know, sh showed that he could uh, handle the load. And I think that 
you know, it could be a legitimate shot that, you know, he gets the start on Thursday against Colorado. That's something you know, we'll talk about more, you know, as it gets closer to time. But I'm really, really enjoying what I'm seeing from him so far. And I hope that it continues. I hope it's not just a flash in the pan. And, you know, because he's still new that folks, you know, aren't uh, used to him as much. And, you know, obviously he has a really good team in front of him, you know, in the NHL with the Hurricanes, of course. And then, you know, down the AHL with the Wolves, you know, he has a really good team around him down there as well. So you look at all this, I think that I'm really, it, it's hard not to get excited. Uh, whenever you see his name in the lineup. And, you know, we're talking about one Russian going to another, Andre Spechkov. He continues his absolutely stellar start to the season. He netted a goal in this game as well. He now leads the team in goals uh, with 12 goals, with the only the closest person being Marty Natchez in second, obviously, with seven goals. Svech is tied for third in the NHL with goals uh, tied with Tage Thompson from Buffalo. And I did not expect this out of Svetch uh, to start out the season. You know, I expected him to, you know, to take another step forward and, you know, in terms of his development, but, you know, to be tied for third in the NHL in goals. And that's never necessarily been his MO. I'm loving it. And, we did get to hear from Svetch last night as well after the game. And this is what Svetch had to say following that win against the Chicago Blackhawks. What can you say about the complete team effort tonight? Yeah, it was a great effort. You know, I thought we played a really good game uh, because, uh, you know, last game was tough for us and uh, we came out hard and uh, we played the, our system and just played hard. You know, that's why it was a success tonight for sure. How nice to get the shout out for your goal. Oh, it's huge, you know. Uh, I, feel, I think uh, he's going to be a uh, star in this league uh, for a long time, especially for our team. And uh, obviously, it's nice, you know, he's going to get uh, his confidence even more, uh, even bigger. And, uh, you know, he, he's a great goalie for sure. As the Russian born players on this team, I know you've developed a friendship with him. What about him makes him so unique as a goaltender? Yeah, I mean, you know, just uh, I, I talked that uh, about that a couple of games ago, but uh, I feel like he's just so focused, you know, on the game days, and uh, he just dial in uh, on every every moment and uh, just try to enjoy it, you know. And uh, obviously, he got uh, some skill there, and uh, you know, he's uh, I, I said it already, but uh, he's going to be good for a long time here for sure. Another goal for you tonight. What did you see on that play? Uh, I, I, I shot, actually I shot a. Shift before that, I shot at the uh, five hole, and uh, you know, I, I, if I was already on his head, head kind of, I'm not gonna shoot there. And uh, you know, puck just came out in the middle, and uh, I shot five hole, so it was nice. <laughs> All right, thanks, Rich. Yeah. So, in hearing from Svetch last night, you know, he's echoing a lot of the things you know I said about you know Piotr, and you know, one thing with last night's game, they were going up against. Peter Morazic, guy I talked about a lot on this show over the years. So I'm not really surprised, you know, that we saw, you know, the Hurricanes really be in control. Again, that's not a slight against Peter at all. And, you know, but they spent, you know, several years with him. So they know his tendencies. They know where he's strong. They know where he's weak. And, so I'm not surprised that, you know, Svetch was able to go and, you know, get a goal. I'm, I'm not surprised, you know, Jordan Martinuk and Jordan Stahl as well. You know, these were guys that played with him for a while. And so they're going to know that uh, how to score on him. And I I will say I am I'm not surprised, you know, that the Hurricanes, you know, shut out the Blackhawks or anything like that. But I, I'm honestly a little surprised that you know we've always you know talked about in the past when you know heck especially when they play san jose how james reimer looks like a freaking vesna caliber goalie against them so you know you go to last night's game and the shot totals and you know chicago you know they you know, they only had 27 shots on goal, which you know, is pretty normal, you know, for, you know, the Hurricanes loading folks. But, you know, 
32 shots on goal, you know, for, you know, the Hurricanes. Yeah. I part of me is isn't surprised that you know, Peter limited them to only three goals, but I'm also not surprised because of like I said, you know, how the Hurricanes they know Peter, you know, he ended up finishing the game, uh, you know, with uh, 29 saves on 32 shots and a 0.906 save percentage. So again, I'm not necessarily surprised, but I'm also and surprised. I'm like, I really thought, you know, that, you know, we would see you know, Sebastian Ajo net a goal here in, you know, I'm obviously not complaining. You know, I'm loving that Jordan Martinuk is off to a heck of a start of the season. Jordan Stahl has three goals in three games. You know, I'm loving this stuff. I'm also surprised we didn't see a little bit more from the Hurricanes in terms of offense. But again, you know, like I've said, you know, it tends to be, you know, whenever we go against former goaltenders, they tend to look for the most part pretty good. And, you know, at the end of the day, a win is a win. I just really hope that the Hurricanes are able to keep this up. And I did mention, you know, Jordan Stahl getting three goals in three games. And we will talk about Jordan Stahl right after this because this episode is brought to you by Bet Online, folks. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your sports betting info, stats, and news analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. Bet Online has it all. Heck, you got AEW's full gear this weekend. I'm really looking forward to that. Are you going to place your bet on John Moxley? Are you going to pl place it on MJF? You also have WWE Survivor Series War Games coming up. So Bet Online has you covered for all of that. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. They are the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. You Again, also have the Hurricanes playing the Colorado Avalanche on Thursday. Could very well be a, another preview of a potential Stanley Cup final matchup. So head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. And of course, guys, thank you for making Locked on Hurricanes your first listen of the day. And for your second listen after this episode, go check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and analysis only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Now, we did get here from Jordan Stahl as well. He's really heating up now, and I'm loving it. Yeah, He's definitely a guy that has paid his dues, so to see him... You know, just get things rolling. You're absolutely loving to see it. And, you know, the thing that stuck with me, you know, uh, that I've talked about, it feels like almost every every time we talk about a game, no passengers. Guys need to step up and get the job done. We don't need guys just out there, you know, and not being, not necessarily not being a part of the team, but, not contributing in, and again, just being a passion, being along for the ride. And Jordan Stahl, you know, he, when he said that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, that really stuck with me. And, you know, we did get to hear from him last night as well, following that win in Chicago. He netted two points in that game. And, you know, we had Jordan Stahl, you know, goal and assist, uh, Jordan Martin at goal and assist, and Brent Burns to assist. These are guys, you know, Burns, you know, a guy you want to be showing up on the score sheet. He is Andre. You know, we've already talked about him and heard from him. He did. And, you know, Jordan saw, you know, a guy you always want to see on the score sheet and Jordan Martin, you know, a guy that it, we'll talk about him more in just a second, but another guy, you, he's not a goal scorer or anything like that, but he's a depth guy, but it's a complete team effort. And that's what we saw in this game against Chicago. And that's what we need to be successful you know, going forward in the rest of the season. But this is what Jordan Stahl had to say following last night's shutout win. A nice little role individually. What can you say about that in addition to the team? Yeah, it's it's been nice to contribute offensively. Um, 
I think our line has uh, has been really consistent um, these last you know ten or so games. So it's always nice uh, to be part of that, and um, you know still but still be effective. Um, our style of play and uh, the way our, our line likes to do things. Nice to work the puck with Burns there on that goal. Yeah, Burns, he's, um, you know, obviously a shooter, but I gave him such a bad pass that uh, he couldn't shoot it. So, you know, he gave it back to me reluctantly. And, um, you know, I got a little opening there. And obviously a seeing eye with uh, Quickie doing a great job screening. And um, fortunately, for the most part, a pretty dominant effort against him. A good start against him. Had a, had a good yeah, I think there were, I mean, we had control of it, obviously. Um, you know, it really just takes one spark against that team, though. And um, I thought Cooch did a great job of stopping some really big saves and kind of keeping them from uh, getting going. Uh, um, you know, it's always hard in this, this building when they get going. And um, I think Cooch was definitely the big uh, difference maker. And you know, a game that might not have looked three nothing uh, if he wasn't playing the way he was. How nice was it to get him the shot out? Yeah, it was great. Obviously, um, he's played really well uh, coming up here and um, done some amazing things. So um, always nice to see uh, a goalie get rewarded when they play well. And, um, tonight was a big night for him. He's won his first five games, and I mean, you've been around and you've seen him goalies come. Um, what do you think of him? He's good. Really good. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so in hearing from Jordan Stahl, you know, echoing again you know, a lot of things, you know, talking about Yoder Kachekov and I, I'm really you know he said you know it feels good you know to be able to contribute offensively but you know he, yeah, I've seen you know, folks talk about you know how when he was originally traded here you know like geez like what was it 2011 2012 you know folks were you know really expecting him you know to have like an offensive boom and you know, kind of be like his brother you know Eric whenever he was here and you're know, not necessarily the case you know uh, Jordan yeah, is more of a defensive uh, forward, but you know, seeing him yeah this year yeah, getting rewarded early on in the season. You know, in the past, it's you know always seemed to be in the back half of the season when it's you know pushed towards the playoffs. Now I'm loving seeing him you know get rewarded early in the season, and you know also you know this late in his career as well. You know, this is his 17th season. Absolutely wild to think about, and you know I'm. I'm glad that we're seeing this from him now and now in November. And I think that's going to be really big you know, going through the rest of the season. Is he going to be like a 40 goal scorer? Heck, is he going to be a 30 goal scorer? Probably not. But, you know, there's still a lot of season left. And, you know, because he is heating up now, it's who knows what we're going to see from him this season. I think it's going to be you know, really, it's going to be a very interesting season to see what we see from Jordan Stahl this year. But, you know, one thing that, you know, I feel that the Hurricanes need to be better at is, you know, obviously score more goals, of course, you know, and, you know, tighten up defensively. But, you know, we talked about, you know, that loss to, uh, not Chicago, Colorado over the weekend. And, I think that one thing the Hurricanes need to do is be better against good teams on the road because it's one thing to shut out Chicago. You know, that's a team you're supposed to beat. That's a team you go in. That's a game, you know, going into this, the Hurricanes are supposed to go in this game. This, this could have been a trap game, to be completely honest, but the Hurricanes are supposed to beat the Blackhawks. But, you know, you look at, you know, some of the road losses. Colorado got embarrassed. You know, when we were on that big West Coast road trip, Edmonton and Calgary, you know, it seems where, you know, the Hurricanes or struggles have came more against, you know, good teams on the road. You've also had, you know, Florida as well. Yeah, you've gotten, you know, some good wins on the road as well. You know, there's the Tampa win at recently. And, you know, that's stuff you need. And, the Hurricanes need to be able to be competitive with these teams on the road. Obviously, you know, the Calgary loss, you know, went to overtime, but, you know, Colorado, they got the brakes beat off of them. And I think that the Hurricanes, as time goes on, it'll get better. But, you know, I remember seeing a YouTube comment a while back, you know, when uh, they're having their road struggles. I believe it was after, after the Edmonton loss, it, Calgary and Edmonton, whichever one was second, 
and you know, comment about how you know, it kind of goes back to last postseason. They couldn't beat Boston on the road, and they couldn't you know beat New York on the road. And you know, I think that that's you know a trend that is sort of carried over to this season. Yeah, and they've gotten some good road wins, of course, but as time goes on, I really we really need to see them tighten up because we don't want a repeat of last postseason. Yeah, you know, they had home ice advantage and whatnot, you know, in the playoffs. And technically they could have went, you know, super deep and never went on the road, but that's not sustainable. It's not sustainable in the regular season. It's not sustainable in the playoffs. They need to be able to beat these good teams on the road. Again, Chicago is a the team they were supposed to beat, and they did. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But, you know, you look at Thursday against Colorado, I really hope that they are able to bounce back, you know, against the Avs and get their win back. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see on that. But, you know, you look at the schedule, like the next – tough road uh, game for the Hurricanes. You know, we're going to look at the schedule. And, you know, you got, um, you got Minnesota coming up on uh, Saturday. You know, that's a game I do think, you know, you need to, Minnesota, you know, they can be, are they on the level of like, you know, Colorado? No, in my opinion, no. They're they're not. I think Colorado's you know better than that. And you know Minnesota, you know as of recording right now, they're sitting at seven six and two. You know they're you know struggling a little bit, but you know you also have you know Boston. I think that'll be like the really like big big test. You know Minnesota, that's the team you're probably supposed to beat. You know, and then there's Winnipeg as well. But you know, you know, and they're nine four and one as of recording. I, I think that's a game, yeah, the Hurricanes go in. They're supposed to win that game. But, you know, Boston next Friday, that's going to be a team where that that's what I'm getting at. You know, the Hurricanes, they go on the road. They're supposed to beat Minnesota. They're supposed to beat Winnipeg. Boston, really good team. That's where they need to show up and really be the Stanley Cup contender that everyone is touting them to be. But... We did also get to hear from Rod Brendamore after last night's game. We still got to talk about Jordan Martinick's uh, great start to his season. And we will do all of that right after this. And this episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. You know, if you've ever thought about securing your home, but you've been putting it off, you'll want to listen up right now. Locked on Hurricanes listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system right now for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you don't want to miss it. Folks, in an emergency 24 7 professional monitoring, agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real. And you can get priority police response simply safe was named the best security home security system of 2022 by u.s news and world report for the third year in a row and simply safe also is a whole home security system with advanced sensors for every room window and door hd security cameras for inside and out smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when the threat is real and even hazard sensors that detects fires, floods, and other threats to your home. 24-7 professional monitoring service costs, in, costs less than $1 a day. That's less than half the price of ADT's traditional professionally installed system. With the top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere. Arm or disarm, lock, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust the settings. So don't miss your chance to save big with the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off the new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com/slash. Locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Now, folks, we did get to hear from Rod Burnmore after last night's game against the Aval 
not the Avalanche, against the Chicago Blackhawks. And this is what Rod had to say. Full team effort tonight. What's the importance of just having that quick response here? Well, we needed a win. Um, I thought we had a good start. And we felt like we were going pretty well and then took a couple penalties and that got us on our heels. And, but Peter made, you know, he made a lot of great saves tonight. I really kept us, yeah, no, I'm going to say in the game, but got, you know, didn't have to panic. You know, we kept them off the score sheet, obviously. So, real huge performance by him. His first NHL shutout, what made that performance possible in his game from well, your perspective? He was dialed in. You know, he, you know, they had a lot of good looks and you can kind of tell on a goalie, he was already there. Like he was, even on a couple backdoor plays, and he's like, he was solid. So, you got to give him a lot of credit. I mean, this wasn't a three nothing game. I don't think we were great after you know the first little while, but we were good enough, and he was, he was, he was great. We've gotten a good look at uh, Burns so far. He never seems to get off the ice. I know. We 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 try to manage his minutes better, but he just he can't keep him off. Like he, he's, uh, you got to give him a lot of credit. He, he's in great shape. You know, you know, he's been around for a long time. He knows how to take care of himself, and uh, he's been a great addition. So, what's the potential of this goalkeeper? I mean, he's had a great night tonight. <laughs> he's got five wins in his five, first five games with here, which is a team record. Uh, but... Is that right? See, I didn't know that. I, he's just been, you know, since day one, I'm, you know, we, we kind of lucked out as far as having to play him. We had injuries, and we weren't, you know, all of a sudden, like, well, throw him in. And, you know, that's a classic tale of kind of taking advantage of your opportunity, and he's, he's done that. So I don't know where, where this can go, but we, we love the kid. We talked about the Jordan Stahl line, I mean, mm-hmm. on a nightly basis at this point. We talked about it earlier, but when you have that consistency from one line with veterans like that on there, what does that do from a coaching perspective? Well, it's, like, we've always loved him. You know, Jordan as a coach, he's a, he's a coach's dream. Just, you know, it, it, you kind of said it, that consistency, right? When you, you want to be able to count on the guys that you throw out there. And, no, in all situations, and uh, I mean that line now has really been like that since we put them together. So uh, it's not just him. You know, Marty's been phenomenal all year, and then you know you're getting out of quickie every night. So uh, that, like you said, that consistency is really the key. All right, thanks, Roger. Yeah. So in getting to hear from Rod, you know, it wasn't a perfect game for the Hurricanes, and you know, like I said, you know, it, it has seemed like you know I think this was a perfect game it was not because peter you know like i said yeah he made some really big saves for the hurricanes and like i said in games past san jose especially whenever we play former goaltenders it they tend to play well and for the most part you know i think you know peter yeah he made some really big saves for the hurricanes but you know at the end of the day the hurricanes were able to come out on the win with this game and Keep talking about Jordan Martinuk. He's had a great start to his season. You know, he's currently at four goals, five assists, and nine points. And I know that may not sound like a lot, but with Marty, you know, he's not, you know, a guy that you want, you know, that you need to go out there and rack up a bunch of points. But, you know, he's already at nine points and he's played 16 games this season. It's November 15th. Last year, Six goals, nine assists, 15 points. Yeah, he was hurt. Yeah, but, you know, he's on pace to, you know, absolutely, you know, obliterate that. And I, I believe I've said it before that I think, you know, we could very well see a career year from him this year if he can stay healthy. I think, you know, come midway through the season, we'll kind of know a bit more, you know, because, you know, if he starts dealing with his injuries again, okay, you know, it's going to gonna taper off. But, you know, he's having a heck of a start to the season and I'm loving it. I hope he can stay healthy because, you know, he's really seems to have a fire under him this year. And, you know, again, goal and an assist last night. That's for him. That's a big game. And, you know, I'm really enjoying what we're seeing from him. He's excelling on that third line since he moved up there with Jordan Stahl. And guess for Fost, I, I'm loving it. I really hope we can see this success from Martin Oak continue. But, you know, we got to get to the next game for that. And that next game will, of course, be on Thursday against the Colorado Avalanche. We'll talk about that game when it gets a little bit closer. But in the meantime, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. So make sure you follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes and myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96. And again, thank you for making Locked on Hurricanes your first listen today. So for your second listen, go check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. 
from games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow, and let's go Canes.